So guys, did you ever think about owning your customers and what that means? What does it mean to have a customer and have that be your customer? Find out this episode. So guys, today I really wanted to talk about the concept of customer ownership. And, you know, I think this is a really important thing that often gets overlooked when you're selling online, because nowadays selling online is such an easy thing. You know, you can get onto one of a million marketplaces, pop a store up overnight, and you're selling. But rarely do we sit down and really concentrate on what it means to have an audience and what it means to own that audience, right? That it's your audience, it's your customer base, and what the benefits of that is. So I kind of got this idea from reading some comments I've seen on some of our other videos. It seems to me that a lot of sellers consider Amazon's customers or eBay's customers or Walmart's customers to be their customers. And that's just simply not true. When you sell on one of these marketplaces, right, like Amazon or eBay or Walmart, customers are going to those sites to shop from those merchants. You might be a seller on that platform, but the average Joe does not understand the difference from ordering from Bill Sports Equipment or Walmart.com. They don't see these as two separate entities. They see them as one, and they see them as Walmart, the principal em- entity. And not only do the customers view it this way, but the platforms actually perpetuate this belief. So they urge you to do all your customer service through them. Amazon doesn't want you putting any inserts or anything to redirect customers away from their channel. They want to maintain ownership of those customers. And, you know, you see this a lot of times when they anonymize email addresses. So that way, you know, you can only email them through their platform. And they really restrict this information. And that's because they own the customer, right? That customer who comes and buys your thing on Amazon is Amazon's customer buying one of your goods that Amazon is selling on your behalf. And that's a really big concept. It's a really big deal. Because when you have your own store, right? Whether you go and set up a Shopify, a Big Commerce, a WooCommerce, a Wix, uh, a Squarespace, any of those things where you can build your own website around a shopping cart module or, you know, just build something on WordPress, you're creating something that's yours, right? Your property. It's your shopping experience. And because of that, it's your customers and you own those customers. That's your audience. That's the people who tune in every week to see what you are selling. Not what's on Amazon this week in terms of dish soap. They're coming to look at your dish soap. You know, it it's, gives you a sense of ownership. And because of that, you can actually have more control. And what I mean by having more control is you can really adjust what that customer experience looks like, right? You can decide what you want to show as the top result. You can decide how many pictures you want to show, how long descriptions are, how long titles are. You can, uh, you, you know, do whatever you want, right, because it's yours, and you, you have that control. You know, you can set shipping policies how you want them. You can answer customer support through whatever email channel you want. You can put whatever you want in that box and mail it out to the customers so they get a coupon code. You know, you can email them directly with new coupons in the future, and this allows you to have a lot more power and a lot more control because it's your customer and you own it. And this is why I recommend to a lot of established sellers, as well as people who are starting out and have the resources, to go ahead and start their own store. Because although your own store might be harder to get going, and it might take more resources than you know just throwing something up on Amazon, there's definitely some value to be had there, because it's your customer then, not Amazon's customer. That customer came to your website to shop from you, and to receive your customer support, your customer experience, and they're integrated into your ecosystem, not the Amazon ecosystem. Not, you know, I, I buy something, I ate his e-claim it, Jeff Bezos got my back, he's my buddy. No, it, it's a completely different experience, and it's one that you get to create. It's one that you get to create as the seller, as the website owner, 
And I think that's really what makes it great. So what I really want to see is I want to see more people take ownership of their customers. I want uh, to see more people realize that building this audience that's unique to them and that can be retargeted through ad campaigns, inserts in boxes, coupons, all kinds of levers that you just don't have with marketplaces. Building this up is just as important as you know ranking high on Amazon or making sure that you know you get the two-day badge on Walmart. This is just as important as a task, if not more important. It's definitely something that's going to make your business work in the long run. Another thing to keep in mind is that when it's your customer, you don't have to pay those uh, terrible referral fees or meet whatever standards of performance or whatever. It's your world, it's your rules, and it's your experience. And I, I mean, that's invaluable. And that's why I think it's really important to think about owning your customers, about what it takes to capture a customer and make them yours. And another thing that's really important is customer retention, right? Because once we get these customers, right, we have them shopping at our website, we have them doing business with us, it's important to maintain that relationship and keep them there. Because, you know, you're going to spend all this money going out there acquiring a customer, getting that first sale. And if they don't stick around, that's a lot of effort and a lot of money to expend for not, really not much gain. So it's important to focus on customer retention. Figure out how you can get them back to the site. How you can bring them around a second time, a third time, a fourth time. How can we, you know, really engage them? A couple of weeks ago, I was talking about giving away free samples of other products you sell. So that way maybe, you know, they, they, they tried the body wash, now they want the shampoo. You know, they tried the lipstick, now they want the nail polish. It's important to really nurture and grow the, your own little ecosystem and your own sphere. So guys, I hope you learned something. Owning your customers is a really important part about being an online seller. It's going to really help take you from this level to this level. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're getting real close to that 1,000. I mean, real close. And you could be the one to set us over the edge. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.